Well, today's winning cures everything. We got to walk over week five of the college football slate. Lots of big games, lots of questions. We got some things to talk about, so let's not waste time. Let's go ahead and get to it. Can you believe it? It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. That's right. It is the... What day is today? Wednesday, September 27th edition of the show. I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Gary WCE. You can follow me on Telegram at Gary WCE if you want to get my my picks throughout the week and whatnot, any news that I stumble across, all that good stuff. Uh, of course, you can also check out buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures. If you feel like donating to the cause, you can do that over there. Uh, and yeah, we're on Twitter at winning cures. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, that's where I'm going to be for the time being until the the powers that be in the Bay Area decide to lift my suspension. Uh, who know, they, they thought that I was not a real person. Interesting. Interesting. Either way. Either way. If you've not already, go and check out the BetUS College Football Show. It's every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We have already gone through all of our games, all of our official plays for Week 5. And we've got a lot going on over there, so... Go ahead and make sure that you are subscribed. We are getting close to 16,000 subscribers over there. Over here on the Winning Cures Everything channel, I'm getting closer and closer to 10,000. So hit the subscribe button here first. Make sure you like the video and all that wonderful stuff. All the things that the YouTube people tell you to do. Do the same crap over here, okay? It's the it's the same stuff. Uh, let's start out today. Oh, 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 by the way, by the way, check out Three Dog Thursday. Every Thursday here on the Winning Cures Everything channel. It'll be right there. TJ Reeves and a different guest each week. Uh, I am not able to do it due to time constraints. Obviously, you see it is late. I'm having to do this at whatever time that I can do when he cures everything. That's when I'm doing it. Uh, but Three Dog Thursday, I've not been able to quite finagle that one in there yet. But at some point this season, I will be back uh, doing that thing. So we'll we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Uh, but Three Dog Thursday, right here every Thursday with TJ Reeves. Uh Great show. I love it. College football underdogs. Always good stuff. All right. We are going to start off today by talking about where is game day going for week number six. ESPN college game day. Two straight Notre Dame games. Obviously, one of them in South Bend with Ohio State. Uh, Definitely the right choice. And the next one in Durham, North Carolina for the Duke Blue Devils. But that's all old hat at this point. Right, We want to know what they're going to do next week. So we got to talk about the games that are going on. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's see. What do we have? Red River is next week. The Red River Shootout, which is what it will always be known to me as, that is one of their favorite places to go. They love the Texas State Fair. They love everything that goes into that. So I would assume that they are probably going to make their way over there. The game is on ABC. So they own the rights to it. They're going to try and sell this thing. A lot of this depends, of course, on what happens in Week 5. If Texas blows it against Kansas again, it's all up in the air. I mean, who knows? So, yeah, Red River probably is the best option. Uh, The next one on the board, I don't know when they're going to go back to Athens. Georgia has won two straight national championships, and there ain't a home game on the schedule that looks like it would be worth game day going. But if Kentucky gets a win over Florida at home in the Bluegrass State this weekend, you could have undefeated Kentucky and undefeated Georgia next week. Uh, I'm not going to say an SEC East championship game because it's way too early in the season for that. They still got Tennessee to play. Georgia does. Well, both of them still have Tennessee to play, although Tennessee's already taken a loss. Who knows? Who knows at this point? Georgia's also still got Florida. Uh... If Notre Dame beats Duke and Louisville handles business on the road at NC State this week, ABC has the primetime Notre Dame at Louisville game. You could have a one-loss top 15 Notre Dame team against a uh, 
an undefeated Louisville team in Jeff Brom's first year. The prodigal son has come home. Eh, that one seems kind of interesting. And then, of course, another ACC bout that ESPN does own the rights to. Uh, Syracuse heads to North Carolina. Could you imagine if Dino Babers and company get a win over Clemson this weekend and North Carolina continues on about their business? Obviously, they would hype up Drake May like it was no tomorrow, but what Jason Beck, the offensive coordinator, has done at Syracuse and, of course, the new D.C. Rocky Long, who was the, uh, the former head coach at San Diego State, I mean, it's been nothing short of miraculous. Like, they look unbelievable thus far this year. Now, strength of schedule matters here, obviously. Uh, but if they can get through Clemson in wounded animal mode, as Josh Pate would say, yeah, that's a that's a pretty enticing one right there. So my guess is Red River because, I mean, Texas, Oklahoma, massive numbers. This is the last year it's going to be in the Big 12. Uh, either that one or Kentucky at Georgia, Notre Dame at Louisville, Syracuse at North Carolina. Those are my predictions for next week. Uh, Red River, obviously, the leading candidate. Tell me in the comments, who do you think? What do you think they're going to do next week? Where are they going to go? I want to know your thoughts on it. All right. Let me tell you about one of our sponsors here. Ticket Smarter. That's right. That's right. You got to check them out. You've seen the banner scrolling across if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on the podcast, we appreciate you. But... I know that you guys are wanting to go to games. You're wanting to go to concerts. I got to tell you, I spent a, a small fortune on tickets to go see Tyler Childers, and I had to get them through a secondary ticket market because you try and get on Ticketmaster when the tickets go on sale, it's impossible for some of these. I, I didn't even know that people knew who Tyler Childers was. It, it was almost, not almost, it was very similar to uh, a Taylor Swift kind of thing, right? Like, the whole site just goes down. Everything goes crazy. You can't get the tickets when they go on sale. It's impossible. Well, Ticket Smarter takes all the guesswork out. As you see, experience the power and excitement of live events. Think smarter. Ticket Smarter. We got promo codes. WCE10 is going to get you 10 bucks off a $100 order uh, or more. And these promo codes don't run out. This is not a one-time thing. Every time you order tickets, you can use these promo codes. WCE10 to get $10 off $100. Or WCE20 to get $20 off of an order of $300 or more. And these big-time college football games, the tickets are outrageous. But, I mean, it, these are lasting memories. You are going to want to go to these games. Uh, and I'll tell you, the Tyler Childers thing, I definitely spent over $300 to go see Tyler Childers. <laughs> Uh, but th some of these bigger concerts, it's going to be the same thing. These stadium tours and everything else, you're going to spend a small fortune to be able to get into these things. Why not take 20 bucks off? WCE20, WCE20 will get you $20 off an order of $300 or more. WCE10 gets you 10 bucks off an order of $100 or more. Ticketsmarter.com. Ticketsmarter. Think smarter. Ticketsmarter. <laughs> Let's uh, let's make sure that we get all those ads in there. All right, it is time to preview week number five, and we got to write our times down here. I got to do a better job of tagging these. Week number five preview. We are going to start off with the biggest brand games of the weekend. Who is going to get the highest ratings? That's the question, right? I I think it goes without saying that whenever Deion Sanders is involved. Regardless of what happened last week, Colorado is going to get monster numbers. And this week, you throw in a blue blood like USC, this thing's on Fox, Big Noon Kick. Yes, it's 10 a.m. Mountain Time. It's 9 a.m. Pacific Time. So body clock game for USC, I don't think it's going to matter. I think they are excited. I think USC is excited about this. I think it's going to be a blowout. But the game last week was a blowout, and it did over 10 million viewers. Colorado and Oregon did over 10 million. That is a number that is typically reserved for Notre Dame and Ohio State, Texas and Alabama, Michigan and whoever else, right? That's who this is reserved for, and yet Colorado is doing this week in and week out. Now, how much of the shine has come off? Quite a bit. I mean, you get beat by, you know, half a hundred. Yeah, it, the shine's going to come off a little bit, but... Still, the games that are on this slate, I mean, nobody's going to compete with this. 
at, at that noon time, it, everybody's going to watch Colorado. It's on Fox. There's no cable required. You got your rabbit ears that you plug into your TV, and you're good to go. So, and Fox is, at least where we are, the easiest channel to pick up, even over ABC, CBS, whatever. Fox is the easy pickup. So, give me USC at Colorado, probably to hit close to that 10 million number again. I think it's going to be a lot of people. Uh, 2.30 p.m. on CBS, my second one, Georgia at Auburn, is the second big brand game of the weekend. Yes, Georgia's first trip away from Sanford Stadium this year, uh, Auburn with Hugh Freeze. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be very interested. I'm sure that a lot of the casual fans, uh, and this is not a casual like Josh Pate talks about, but uh, the casual fans don't even realize that Auburn got housed at Texas A&M last week. They got no idea, right? But this week, you got the Deep South's oldest rivalry. Uh, look, Georgia has had a lot of success in this series, Okay. It still doesn't deter people from watching this game. If you're an SEC fan, and there are a lot of them, this is the game you're going to have turned on at 2.30 p.m. So, 2.30 p.m. Central Time on CBS. I think Georgia-Auburn does $5 million, somewhere around there. Like, college football has a, a bigger audience now, and that's a good thing. That's definitely a good thing. Number three for me, Notre Dame at Duke. Now, typically, Duke would not be one of these games that has super high ratings, but this is the primetime game on ABC. Notre Dame just took that loss to Ohio State. There were over 10 million people watching that one. I think it's going to do big numbers. Any game that has Notre Dame involved, especially a ranked matchup, is going to bring in viewers. And I think that we're going to get probably between 4 and 5 million people watching Notre Dame and Duke on Saturday night. It's going to be a massive scene in Durham. College game day is going to sell this game all morning long. And then once it gets to be about 6.30 p.m., everybody's going to tune in. Because there, there's not another, like, huge game at night. Uh, LSU Ole Miss, kind of. But, I mean, both of those teams already have a loss. So, in this situation, you got an undefeated uh, smart kid school in Duke. And then you got Notre Dame. I mean, Notre Dame is the cash cow. They're the cash cow. Kansas at Texas, I think, is going to be interesting for a little while. I expect Texas to kind of run away with this thing, uh, but that one's at 2.30 p.m. on ABC. Uh, that one, probably over 4 million. Texas, massive brand, uh, facing another ranked undefeated team and a team that just beat them in Austin the last time that they played back in 2021, or the last time they played there, anyway. So, I think that one's probably going to do over 4 million. Michigan at Nebraska, I think, probably gets over... That one, Michigan at Nebraska, I should probably have higher on this list. Uh, it's a 2.30 p.m. kick on Fox. That one might do more than Notre Dame and Duke. I mean, it, hell, it, with Michigan and Nebraska, those two fan bases, I mean, that thing could do more than Georgia and Auburn. Michigan at Nebraska might be the second highest watched game of the weekend. That thing might do like $6 million. It's It's crazy numbers, crazy numbers. Uh, and then finally, ESPN has got LSU at Ole Miss at 5 p.m. Central Time. Yeah, uh, I think you're, I mean, these these big-time SEC matchups typically get uh, somewhere between 3 and 4 million. Sometimes they crack the 4 million mark, and I would expect this one to do the same thing. It's going to be high scoring. The total is like 67 right now. So I expect some pretty big numbers on LSU and Ole Miss. Now, the most exciting games of the weekend, or which games are going to be the closest, right? The closest score, whatever. Texas A&M and Arkansas are playing. Now, this could end up being a touchdown game. Texas A&M could absolutely cover the spread. I wonder what the morale of the team is now that Connor Wigman has been announced as being out for the season, right? Which is just devastating for that kid. That offense was looking a lot better. Max Johnson did a really admirable job in his backup spot coming in and, you know, in a reserve role for Connor Wigman against Auburn last week. But Auburn's offense couldn't do anything, and I expect Arkansas to be able to do some stuff. So, uh, that one I think could get pretty exciting. You could see some some really interesting stuff there. Notre Dame-Duke, how much has Notre Dame got left in the tank after their Ohio State game? I think that one could get really, really interesting. Another, It's a hostile environment in Durham. I think that the Duke fans are going to be fired up here. Uh, this is a small stadium. Wallace Wade Stadium holds like 32,000 people. It's not big but it's going to be jammed to the rafters. So I expect that one to be pretty exciting. Uh, Boise State at Memphis. 
Liberty Bowl Stadium or Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium, whatever it is now. They keep changing all these traditional names. It's ridiculous. But regardless, uh, Memphis has got some big-time home games this year. Fans in this city are excited about this team. They are excited about these kinds of games. You got Boise coming in. You got Tulane coming in. You got SMU coming in. These are big-time matchups for the Tigers. I think you're going to have a pretty packed house. Uh, This one, I think, is at 3 p.m. Central, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, But I think that one could get pretty exciting. I mean, both of these teams are just... They're wrecks, and they they tend to get in their own way quite a bit. I think you could see some pretty explosive plays going on in that one. LSU Ole Miss, I mean, goes without saying. These defenses, uh, not great. Not great. LSU's defense gives up so many explosive plays, and you know Lane knows how to draw them up. So that one's going to be good. Kentucky, Florida, I think it's going to be low scoring, but it's a pretty massive game for both of these teams, right? I know that Florida took that opening loss at Utah, I mean, they got the win at home over Tennessee. They're kind of they're kind of rolling right now. Like they're not blowing teams out, but Billy Napier knows how to coach a football team, and I think he's built this team very interestingly. So Florida, Kentucky, that that one's going to come down to the wire, I would imagine. Clemson, Syracuse, that one's always exciting. Every single freaking year, that game comes there, and people expect Clemson to just run away with it against them every time out. But Dino kind of has their number. I mean, they're, they're like 6-1 and one against the spread against those guys in the past seven matchups. Uh, Troy at Georgia State could get really interesting. Troy's still a good defensive team, just not as good as they were last year. John Sumrall is still a good coach, even if they are not the same 12-2 and two team that won the Sun Belt last year, right? Uh, they're still good. Georgia State, of course, interesting. Got a win at Coastal Carolina last week. That's a, that's a good win to have in your back pocket. Uh, and then finally, South Alabama and James Madison. That's a, another Sun Belt matchup. Uh, South Alabama, very up and down so far this season. That's my pick to win the Sun Belt. Uh, they got a bunch of, you know, they got a bunch of guys back. I think, um, I think you could see something very interesting out of South Alabama and James Madison this weekend. Which teams have the most to gain and the most to lose this weekend? Clemson and Syracuse. Syracuse has the potential to start out what five and zero, four or uh, six and zero, maybe no, no five and zero, five and zero. And and they would do it by sending Clemson to zero and three in the ACC for the first time in. I mean, I can't remember how long it's been. That's this is wild that Clemson opens their ACC slate with a road game at Duke, hosting Florida State. And then they have to play at Syracuse, which has been a house of horrors for them. This one, that's huge for most to gain, most to lose. Uh, South Alabama at James Madison. James Madison, this, every game is kind of their Super Bowl in this conference. They are not eligible to win the conference. They're not eligible to make a bowl game. But they are trying to just whip everybody in between. It's, it's like they know, hey, we're not doing anything at the end of the year, so let's make every game count. South Alabama, I mean, they lost at home to Central Michigan last week. And the week before that, they blew out Oklahoma State in Stillwater. I don't know what this team is, but they have got to get this figured out because if they want to win the Sun Belt, you probably need to go on and get this one at James Madison. They they got some other tough ones coming up. Uh, Texas and Kansas. That's a battle of undefeated teams in the Big 12. The winner of that game uh, is, is leading the pack in the Big 12 thus far. Yeah, interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, Texas... All that goodwill that you got from beating Alabama could be gone in a single Saturday afternoon if you lose at home to Kansas. It doesn't matter that Kansas is a good football team, that they are undefeated, that they are ranked in the top 25, which I think they are. I'm not totally certain about that, but regardless. Yeah, this is an undefeated Kansas team, and it doesn't matter because you are supposed to beat them. Texas right now I think is like a 16.5-point favorite. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> uh, and then finally Kentucky and Florida uh, the winner of this is I think in the driver's seat to be at least second in the east and whoever it is that wins this one can compete with Georgia so we'll see what happens I, I say can compete I mean they're going to try and compete and we'll see what happens <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens with that one uh, but either way either way alright 
I know you guys like this segment. The most likely underdog outright winners this weekend. I got a few of them. Duke and Notre Dame, right? Duke is a five and a half point dog right now. Uh, make sure I'm looking up the numbers here as we're doing this. But yeah, Duke is a five and a half point dog. Would it surprise anybody if Notre Dame just had nothing left after they lost on the basically the last play of the game at home last week to Ohio State? I mean, they they had put so much into that game. It just an emotional, like this is a terrible spot for them. Uh, because Duke, I mean, it's the biggest game in Duke history. And Notre Dame is coming off of maybe the most heartbreaking loss uh, that I can remember for that program. Now, they've had some pretty heartbreaking losses, but to lose on the last play of the game like that, eh, that's that's rough. That one is rough. Um, USF against Navy. All right, so I, I really liked this one at USF plus four. It's now three and a half. I think USF wins this game outright. I think they got the dudes. I don't like Navy at all. Yeah, I, I think I would roll with USF here. Um, Ole Miss against LSU. Now, LSU is a good football team, a much more talented football team as well. They've had a lot of success against Ole Miss in the past you know, six, seven years, whatever it is. But that defense is atrocious. And you know Lane Kiffin has got some things in his bag for that secondary. Jackson Dart is going to be going deep regularly. I think the, I think Kiffin and Dart both regret not going deep against Alabama's secondary um, because in LSU, you know that you got a chance to go uh, way, way deep against those guys. Uh, Houston against Texas Tech. My numbers, as bad as Houston has looked, my numbers like Houston outright this week. They were 10-point dogs. That thing's been bet down to eight, uh, maybe seven and a half. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But I, that one is, let's see. I got it pulled up right here. Nope, nope, nope. It's back to eight and a half. Okay, so there's been a bit of buyback on that one. And that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, Morton is starting. Tyler Shuck, the uh, quarterback for Texas Tech, is out. Morton was not good against West Virginia. Now, Houston's defense ain't West Virginia's defense. I think that's... Uh, an understatement, but uh, Donovan Smith going back to Texas Tech. Uh, yeah, I think this one could get interesting. So Houston, we could take a flyer on those guys. South Alabama is a three-point dog at James Madison. I think they're going to win the game outright. So, uh, and then Coastal at Georgia Southern. This is a team that just has kind of been written off after they lost to Georgia State uh, last Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. So, they lost as a seven-point favorite at home to Georgia State. Georgia State is built differently than Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern is very much a finesse kind of football team. They don't do a good job of defending the pass. They don't do a good job of running the ball, which is Coastal's weakness on defense. I think Coastal is built to be able to beat teams like Georgia Southern. They are not built to beat teams like Georgia State. It's just two completely different types of ball clubs. So, Coastal Coastal Carolina is a six and a half point dog here. I think they can win the game outright. My numbers have them basically as a pick them. Yeah, I think that's that's the most likely underdog outright winners. Okay. G five game of the week. Boise at Memphis. I think is the G five game of the week. All right, so there's other ones. Obviously, we've we've talked about pretty much all these. But that's a name-brand matchup. I think that's going to do some some eyeballs for ESPN for sure. That's, that's two incredibly well-known G5 teams that have not gotten the call-up yet. I, I'm so glad that they have scheduled this, right? So it's in Memphis this year. It's in Boise next year. Um, that one's going to be fun. South Alabama and James Madison. I've talked about that one multiple times. Troy at Georgia State. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's another one. That's going to be big in the Sun Belt. Eastern Michigan at Central Michigan. A bit of a rivalry game. This is a good one. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm interested. I'm interested in this one. So, we'll, uh, we'll see what ends up happening with that. But that is, uh, that's going to wrap up our preview for this. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can pull up. Yes, I can, as a matter of fact. All right. It is time for the viewing guide for week number five. 
Let's go and pull it up on our screen here. Da, da, da. Okay, so. Eh, that's not going to work. Let's do the full web page. That way you, you guys can see exactly what's going on. Okay, cfb.guide is the place to do this. We got games on Thursday night. My Thursday game that I'm going to be watching is Middle Tennessee against Western Kentucky. I think that's going to be an interesting game. Western Kentucky is the favorite in Conference USA. Now, Liberty has kind of gotten the ball rolling quite a bit. But Middle Tennessee, uh, this is a rivalry game. These teams are like 90 miles apart. They hate each other. That's the game I'm going to be watching on CBS Sports Network. On Friday night, 8 p.m. on FS1, I want to see about Utah and Oregon State. Now, I'm probably going to have this one on the main screen at uh, at 8 p.m. East, or Central. Excuse me. I do think that I'm going to put Louisville and NC State on another TV. And if you look behind me, uh, which here, we'll pull it back up so you can see. Right back over there. I've got three TVs. So I've got the main screen. I've got two on the outside. Uh, my main screen is going to have Utah and Oregon State. But I'm going to have Cincy and BYU on another screen on ESPN. That one's not until like 9.15 p.m. Uh, and then I'm going to have uh, Louisville, NC State. And that's another one. Uh, both of those, like one will probably end right before the other one or, or very close to, but regardless. Uh, but yeah, let's pull it back up on the screen so you can see what we're looking at. All right, moving on to Saturday. 11 a.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone on ESPN. I'm going to be watching Florida at Kentucky. Now, I think the majority of everybody else is going to be watching USC at Colorado, and there are other fascinating games in that, in that time slot, right? Texas A&M at Arkansas on SEC Network which, man, who would have thought? And that's not at Arkansas. That's at, uh, It's in Jerry World. They still got the contract going there. That is a fantastic ball game, all right? Because I don't know what in the world is going to happen there. Uh, USC at Colorado, I think, is what everybody is, is going to be watching, at least for a little while to see if USC can get some margin there. And Clemson at Syracuse is going to be very, very interesting. That one's going to be on one of my side screens. So, uh, moving along to the 2.30 slate. 2.30 p.m. Central Time, God's time zone, of course. On ABC, I'm going to watch Kansas at Texas. That's going to be on my main screen. Now, I'm going to have Georgia at Auburn on another screen, and I'll probably skip Michigan-Nebraska, and I'm going to have Boise State at my uh, at Memphis on another screen. Okay, so those will be my three screens. But Kansas-Texas is going to be my main screen here because I want to make sure that this Texas defense is for real, and I'm going to see if the Texas offense can show a little bit of consistency because they have not been very good just at all I, I don't know what is going on there but uh they've shown explosive ability but they hadn't really done much about it so uh, either way either way it is what it is uh moving on to the to the prime time slot prime time which is it's 7 p.m is, is the typical prime time slot uh most people probably going to be watching Notre Dame and Duke not me not me no sir I'm watching LSU at Ole Miss. That's what I'm watching. Now, it's a 5 p.m. Central Time kick, but it doesn't matter to me. That All that means is that the game's going to be over quicker, and maybe I can turn over to uh, Notre Dame and Duke, right, on the on the main screen. And, and we'll see what the game looks like at that point. But regardless, I think LSU and Ole Miss is going to be fascinating. That t- again, that total is 67 on an SEC game. These are two defenses that cannot stop one another. Uh, points galore. It's going to be going to be fun. Going to be a lot of fun. And then finally, the prime time slate. There's not like a, a super, super late game. I mean, I kind of, kind of, not really. We got a we got a 9 p.m. kick for Washington at Arizona. Now, that's on the Pac-12 network. Whatever website you guys are watching on, just send it over to me. That's, a <laughs> that's, that's what I would like to know. Uh, but one of my side TVs is probably going to have San Diego State and Air Force. I want to see what does this matchup look like now, right? Because San Diego State used to be the thorn in Air Force's side. They beat them every year. They knew how to defend that triple option. And now uh, I think Air Force got it turned around last year by uh, by getting that win. That's what I'm thinking. So that, uh, that'll do it for the viewing guide. So let's bring this thing back up here. Of course, every week, I give you guys a list of the most unlikely wins, and then we go over some of the early games uh, that we're that we're going to take a look at, of course. So the most unlikely wins from week number four, and 
We'll start off here. Wyoming, who beat App State last week, they had a 3.54% post-game win expectancy. They won the game 22-19. to They won it basically uh, on a blocked field. Like, App State was trying to kick a field goal to effectively ice the game. Wyoming blocked it and ran the kickback and then hit the two-point conversion, which allowed us to get the push. We were very lucky on the Bet US show. But 3.54% post-game win expectancy. Numbers weren't that great, even though they were at home. Yeah. Uh, Northwestern was down by three touchdowns heading into the fourth quarter. Down by 20, 31 to 10 and came back and won the game in overtime over Minnesota. 3.79% post-game win expectancy. Not great. This one might surprise people. And these the post-game win expectancy is based on the stats in the game. What percentage of the time would those stats win another game, right? It's based on past uh, past data, past statistics. I think I said that right. Uh, Ohio State, 4.08% post-game win expectancy against Notre Dame. And they won the last play of the game, but, I mean, Notre Dame was the more efficient overall team in that spot, and Ohio State got the win. Uh, Boise State, 15.4% post-game win expectancy in a 34-31 win at San Diego State. Uh, this this Broncos team is not great. NC State, I'm sure a bunch of you guys watched that on Friday night. 24-21 over Virginia. They had a 24.11% postgame win expectancy. Virginia had the better numbers. Had the better numbers. Central Michigan beat South Alabama last week, 34-30. In Mobile, no less, had a 35.26% postgame win expectancy. Florida State, and I know that you guys have been box score hunting on that one. I mean, I think they ran for 22 yards in the game. Clemson outrushed them by like 100 yards. Clemson outgained them by like 130. But Clemson turnovers, couldn't finish in the red zone, couldn't finish drives, missed field goals again, all that kind of stuff. Florida State, 38.02% postgame win expectancy. And then finally, the last one that was a little bit unlikely, New Mexico, 49.30% postgame win expectancy in an overtime win at UMass last week. Uh, cheers to Dylan Hopkins, the quarterback out there that uh, that came over from UAB, and of course Brian Vincent, the offensive coordinator that was the interim head coach at UAB, uh, got that offense kind of rolling with New Mexico, just rolling a little bit. All right, we do this every week, the early games. Let's go on and see what we can do with these bad boys and write the times down. Of course, of course. Da, da, da. Temple heads to Tulsa. On Thursday night, that is tomorrow night, that is less than 24 hours from now, and yet here I am talking about these games. It is what it is. Uh, Temple is a three and a half point road dog at Tulsa. The total sits at 55 and a half. Uh, I have not looked up a bunch of trends and whatnot this week, and and yes, I will be doing a, a picks and preview video. But regardless, it's going to pull this bad boy up. I have got Tulsa favored by almost two points. And my numbers do not expect a ton of points here. <laughs> they just don't. My power rating has Tulsa by 1.68. Uh, the raw numbers have Tulsa by 1.95, so effectively two. PPA margin likes Temple more. Temple number 93 in PPA margin. Uh, Tulsa is number 119. But you look at offensive success rate, Tulsa, of course, of course, a Kevin Wilson offense is going to be number 50 in offensive success rate. That makes all the sense in the world. Uh, Tulsa likes to play a little bit faster as well. They're number 45 in plays per game, number 35 in offensive plays per game. They're averaging over 70 plays per game. Uh, Temple, on the other hand, 74 plays per game. Um, net points per drive, they're both terrible. Uh, Temple is better in net explosiveness. They're number 59 in offensive explosiveness, number 54 at uh, defending. Explosive plays. Tulsa is not explosive at all. Now, I love the Tulsa quarterback and everything, um, but you start looking at, at some of these numbers and, you know, the five factors rank. Uh, you you got Temple here. I I think the three and a half, I'm going to have to take Temple. Like, I just, it, it, I know it's a tight, tight spot, and I do like Tulsa to win the game, at least numbers-wise. But, whew, um, yeah, which, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up so that, you know, if anybody wants to pause it to take a look at the numbers, you can. Cheers to you. 
I'll, I'll set it up like that so that you can pause the screen right there. But I do like Temple plus three and a half on the road. Uh, I've told y'all, I like this team. I like this team quite a bit. And so I will, uh, I will take the Owls here. All right. Next one on the board. Let's move it along. Move it along. Last one that we're going to hit for tonight. Another early uh, season match, early week matchup, and this is a Friday night slate. BYU and Cincinnati are playing on Friday night, 9.15 p.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone, on ESPN. And I am... Yeah, I'm interested. How about that? I'm interested in this game. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, BYU is a two-point underdog at home. I don't know what the injury report says. I have no idea. Uh, that That's the only thing that I could see that would make Cincy a favorite here, especially after they put up only six points at home in their Big 12 opener against Oklahoma last week. That Oklahoma defense is, is better. Are they that much better? I mean, this is just, this is wild. Um, but hey, it is what it is. So, my numbers like BYU by four. Now, power rating likes BYU by less than a point. But they certainly don't have Cincinnati favored here. Uh, PBA margin, like siding with BYU. Uh, well, PPA margin sides with Cincinnati. Number 71 in PPA margin. Uh, number 98 for BYU. You start looking for... An advantage, BYU's offense has not been great. They're not very efficient at all. Number 124 in offensive success rate. Uh, Cincinnati's defense, number 28 in defensive success rate. The numbers lead you to liking Cincy, I think. But uh, if you guys watch the BetUS show, you know net explosiveness is a major, major thing for me. And BYU is number 10 in net explosiveness. Cincinnati is number 125. I... I think that BYU can create some big plays. Uh, Cincy, number 129 in defensive explosiveness allowed. That ain't good. Uh, And then, of course, I think that the more disciplined team is BYU, especially with Cincy going to Provo for the first time at elevation. This is a lot of these numbers. I know that BYU, their offensive efficiency numbers don't look great. But I think that they can draw up some plays. I think that they'll be able to score in this game against Cincinnati. Uh, I think BYU is going to win this game outright. And I know that they're a two-point dog. But why on earth would BYU be a two-point home dog on a weeknight? Does that make sense to anybody else? And I know I'm in here talking to myself. But regardless, uh, while the numbers look great for Cincinnati right now, and, and I still like Scott Satterfield as a coach. I do. But this just, it screams for you to take BYU. And maybe that's what the books want you to do. Maybe that's what they want you to do. Uh, But by God, I'm going to fall into that trap. Like, I'm going to put a little bit of pizza money on BYU outright. But for show purposes, BYU plus two is the play. All right. It's time to get out of here. I've gone long. But I have enjoyed doing this by myself. That's fun. Um, But with that said, Let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, and get out of here. Let's let's get this thing done. Uh, check out Ticket Smarter. Use the promo codes WCE10 for ten dollars off a hundred dollar order or more, or use WCE20 two zero WCE two zero for twenty dollars off an order of three hundred dollars or more. That's the way that you're going to get it done. Check out the BetUS College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday, one p.m. Eastern time. Of course, Thursdays. Check out Three Dog Thursday. I will be back. Uh, later on in the week, whether it's tomorrow or the next day, whoever, either Thursday or Friday, I'm going to have my pick show out where I'm going over like 20 different games uh, that we did not discuss on the BetUS show. So be on the lookout for that one as well. If you're not already, subscribe to the channel, like the video, all the good stuff. Toss your thoughts in the comments. I would love to hear from all of you. Any other notes? I think we're good. Ticket smarter. Uh, think smarter. Ticket smarter. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you. Uh, Buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures. Follow me on Telegram at Gary WCE. And of course on Twitter at winning cures. I think that's going to do it. All right. You guys take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football. And hopefully all of your tickets cash this week. 
Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.